So there I was in Bud's Medical, and I'd just been told by the, the DMO that I, he was recommending me to be medically dropped from training. And you can imagine what that, that unbelievable sinking feeling in your gut that my dream was over. Well, I, I, somehow something inside me lifted me up and I went and put on my best, best uniform because I had to go report to the base training officer and, and, and let him know what was going on. He had requested to see me. And so I remember walking into his office and I you know, put my chest out as straight as possible and standing at attention as, with the greatest military bearing that I could muster and snapped that salute up and sounded off and you know, Seaman Rutherford reporting his order, sir. And I remember him saying to me, stand at ease, Rutherford. And, you know, what's going on with you? He looked down at my report and just started kind of shaking his head. And, and he goes, you know, why do you keep breaking on me? <laughs> and so, you know, he goes, at ease, at ease. So I got at ease and crossed my arms and I said, permission to speak frankly, sir. And he said, absolutely. I mean, tell me what's going on. And so he basically, he looked at me and, he, and, he, and I looked at him and I said, sir, you know, I've never had this problem my whole life. I've never had issues with my legs or my, I've never had injuries that would prevent me from doing anything. I don't know what's going on. And so he said, well, Rutherford, why don't you just hang tight? And I said, yes, sir, snapped to attention. And he walked out of the office and walked across that, uh, that long walk across the grinder over to the PTRR office and, and walked in. And, Unbeknownst to me, he ended up talking to the, the, the head, the head warrant for PTRR at the time and uh, asked him, he said, hey, what's up with this Rutherford kid? Is he good to go? So about five minutes later, he comes back in that room and I snap too. And he says, at ease, Rutherford, at ease. And he looks over at me and goes, well, Rutherford, looks like you got a Bud's Angel on your shoulder. And I said, excuse me, sir? And he goes, I just talked to somebody over at the PTRR who said that you've got the right attitude to make a good frogman one day. So today's your lucky day. Do you want a single roll or a double roll? And, and meanwhile now I feel like I've just taken a flurry in the, in the face and the gut and I'm trying to shake it off on what he just said. And I said, excuse me, sir? And he said, well, you heard me. Do you want a single roll or a double roll? And I was like, wow. I said, sir, I'll take a double roll. Now, a double roll means that I had to wait four months of training in order for that next class that I was going to be enrolled in, which was class 208, to get formed up and start first phase. But you know what? I didn't care if it would have been a year, as long as I could stay in training and keep going after my dream. So once I finished Hell Week, was, which is considered one of the hardest military training evolutions on the planet, this five day ultra evolution where you, you're up for basically four straight days before you get a one hour sleep, then you do 24 hours, get another hour, and then you finally graduate. And when you graduate Hell Week, you go through this unbelievable metamorphosis, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. I mean, literally, you, you recognize that there isn't anything that you, can, you can't accomplish in your life. And, and with this recognition comes this unbelievable responsibility with it, because now you know there isn't anything you can't accomplish in your life. So once you're through this gateway, you, you start training and you start knocking it out and you start going hard. And you know, thankfully with 208, it was great. I started trucking, got into, into second phase. And in second phase, I, I hit another little road bump and uh, I entered pool comp, which is the hell week in the water for dive phase. Well, because I wasn't mentally focused and didn't have a clear set of goals, I ended up uh, failing that evolution. Well, that was my first performance role, and that rolled me back two more months to class 209. When I got back with 209, got to pool comp again, I knocked it out on my first try. And thankfully, by that time, I was so focused and so honed in on what I needed to do to achieve my dream and buds that I ended up just starting to make it, gain ground every single day, both both in my, in my heart and in my mind. And, and eventually I, I got the third phase and, and ended up graduating with class 209 in, in, in February 1997. And boy, was that one of the greatest days of my life.
So once you graduate Budge, you're on this incredible fast track, going to school after school, you're going to SQT, you're going to jump school, you're doing all these things that just, just shoot you out like a cannon. And when you thought it was fast in Buds, when you start going to those next levels of training, it's twice as fast. Well, stand by to stand by, because you don't know nothing until you get to a platoon. The feeling you get when you're in a platoon, and you have 15 men that are committing their lives for you day in and day out, is the most powerful feeling you could ever imagine. So after my first platoon, which was an amazing time with Hotel Hell, it was one of those experiences like I finally started figuring out I knew what was going on. Once I finished that first platoon, I got in my second one, but the needs of the Navy took over. I got reassigned to SEAL qualification training at the center, which I, I wasn't too happy about because at that time I was a one platoon wonder. Well, guess what? When you show up as an instructor to these fresh frogmen straight out of buds, you better come with some clout. And in the teams, that clout is based on how many platoons you've done. When I got to SQT, my attitude wasn't where it needed to be. Fortunately, with the help of some incredible mentors who are still mentors to me to this day, especially my senior chief, they righted that attitude. They got me in line and they pulled out of me what I needed to have pulled out of me, which was that internal ability to motivate human beings to push themselves beyond all their known limitations. That's right, that's what I was given a gift in this world, to motivate people, to get them to, to charge life with reckless abandon, if you will. Well, after that SQT experience, I discovered my passion for teaching. It was in that time and, and teaching those kids, or I shouldn't call them kids, those young frogmen, and teaching those young frogmen the importance of being passionate about what they did for a living, man, that transformed me.